Hello, Jacqueline just joined. Hey, Jackie, it's Dan. Hey, Dan, how are you? Good morning, good. Good morning. Give everyone a few minutes to join in here. Hello, everyone. Hey. Good morning. Hey, it's okay. Good morning. Hey, good morning. Hello. Can people see my screen? Yep. Right. Yep. Daniel's here. Good to see you again, then. And then, see else? I don't think Tracy is here. I mean, nope. Um, Spencer, Tracy, all right, so I guess we can get going. Um, so this. I guess, is this, I think this is Taras, uh, the TOC call to support APAC time zone. I think uh, a, a, a few folk now have asked for that, Kosuke. Um, so I think we should start looking at um, how to support that or have an uh, additional tag up um, uh, for folk that are in that, um, that time zone. Uh, can, we, we just signed on Fujitsu as a uh, uh, premiere. Uh, member as well, and so they were asking if there's going to be a better time um, for participation in the right. Um, we discussed this before. I think Tara might have volunteered or at least looked into it or something. Well, I mean, <clears throat> uh, what I was looking into was um, how we could engage anybody behind the Great Firewall, which I think we. Um, uh, we kind of discovered uh, that so was going to be a wash. Different. different, yeah. So what, what we're, we are doing now is I'm publishing all of the minutes to the GitHub repo um, after every meeting, but we don't have a, uh, a conference, um, uh, a, a video conference set up for that. 
um, right. as far as the, the time zones, I know that um, doing APAC is going to be pretty tough on anybody who's East Coast US. I think it's about, would be about 6 p.m., I think is the ideal time um, for West Coast. And I think that gets it, you know, in a reasonable morning time for, um, right. For yeah. like Shanghai kind of is the, the swath that I'm most familiar with. And, and um, how about Europe? Do we have anyone from Europe in this call? I guess not. So at least I don't know that we have. Yeah, myself. Yeah, I'm from okay. Sweden. Kind of Europe. It's Middle East. Okay. okay. So I guess we are looking at the rotating goals, like uh, that we can. Yeah, I, th I think rotation yeah. would probably be the easiest thing to do for some very broad definition of easy. <laughs> right. Okay. Um, so. I guess. Okay. Um, let's see. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to maybe Dan Lopez and I could just work out a, a proposed schedule and then kick it around just to get that started. Is yeah. that, does that seem yeah. like an okay thing, Dan? Yeah, it works for me. Okay. Yeah, you could send out a doodle or something like that. A couple options. Yeah, something. I think that's how we scheduled this one originally. Nothing sadder than a, a very uh, wide open doodle that still doesn't get consensus. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Not that I've ever had that happen, of course. It's too, <laughs> too <laughs> real. <laughs> all right. Um, okay. And then, uh, all right. So, is that, I think that's good enough on this one. Um, yep. And then, so telemetry, so I think Dan, you brought this up. Um, so a question from Oleg on the existing projects. Um, do you, I guess you are you involved in the were you involved in the cooking process of this? Well, uh, yeah, process? all Linux Foundation projects will now fall under this for for many reasons. There's going to be um, no. I, I saw a few of the comments this morning. Uh, to my understanding, there's not not going to be any grandfathered. Uh, technologies that are uh, or projects that are um, allowed to continue down a path of telemetry gathering without review. Okay, I just to make sure. I mean, when we, when I say grandfather, I mean I'm not talking about the technology; it's just like a process policy wise. But I felt like it'd be harsh to just, you know, we yeah, have. It's a new policy that's um, a blanket policy for all projects underneath the Linux Foundation. But we um, we, we want to be as uh, flexible as possible with. Um, understanding people's needs. So a, a review process um, would then kick off. We'd like to sure. um, propose telemetry gathering in a certain way. There's a, just a lot of concerns that have come to the Linux Foundation around uh, privacy behind the firewall type uh, security issues and, and even PII data floating about. We, we, right. we need to uh, uh, get that under control as well as, um, you know, compliance with other policies out there like GDPR and things like that. I was just going to say, I'm assuming that this is driven largely by, you know, some aggressive uh, government related yeah. regulatory bodies. Yeah. And, uh, and subpoenas and depositions and things like that. So we don't yeah. want. Well, I, I mean, is there any reason Tosca or, or anyone else that we wouldn't just Go with this for T for uh, CDF. Yeah, I don't think anybody. I don't. I'm not hearing any pushback. I think the only question is, what about the existing data collection that's already going on? Right. So, I mean, the if the because like we can't just suddenly like make them stop. Well, or maybe we can, but it's uh, very disruptive. So, I mean, um, I mean the, the the reality is is that this the Linux Foundation and the CDF can get sued just as much as any company. So. I think if we make it clear, it's like we have to conform to a certain level of reasonable compliance, legally speaking, you know, and then the, then the effort is for anyone who's outside of that, we just work on a schedule for when they become compliant. Otherwise, yeah, so we're risking, a, yeah. yeah. So I, as yeah, long as so we're doing that, I think that's reasonable. Right, yeah, so I think you're putting the Jenkins hat on, I think it's the, the point that I'd like to get to, is, okay, we don't have to like do an emergency, like a rollback of all these things, but we, instead we just get the review going, and I think yeah. that's what sounds like, and if that's okay, then I think you're good. You're here. Yeah. That sounds great. So I think what I'm hearing, um, 
uh, something that works for the CDF is that uh, Kazuke, you you can message the community saying we have to abide by this and um, let's come up with a game plan to become compliant um, and a timeline to do that. That would be good. Yeah. So uh, let's see. So I guess this to so add this to the TLC people for so I guess I see like an action two for the one is to I guess to publicize the fact that this is the standing policy at the moment uh, going forward and then there's another action for the Jenkins project to you know, uh, yeah I think not just the Jenkins project um, and Andy I see Andy's on here um, we might need all projects to um, check on I'm here Dan Hey Andy, um, we may need to have other projects, including Spinnaker, go through just a quick review and um, understand if they're under uh, if they're in compliance or needing some time to go under review. Yeah, no, I totally agree. I'm still trying to understand what exactly the implications of this are, is, uh, but I, we can take it offline. Cool. So. Um, so, Andy, does that mean that you are aware that the Spinator is collecting some term of it? Uh, at this point, uh, yes and no. Uh, there were talks about making it collect more data, kind of like Jenkins, but it sounds like uh, uh, that's a no-go, so. Uh, or at the, very, at the very least, it has to be something that's optional. Yeah, exactly. Right, okay. So, there's... So, it's, uh, it sounds like there's currently no term of corruption happening. Um, and I'm pretty sure Tecton doesn't do anything. Dan is, I mean, I can't imagine what Tecton might be doing at this nope. point. Nothing right now. Yeah, I didn't think so. I'm sure but there are active conversations in the Spinnaker yeah. community to start collecting data. So this is, yeah. a, you know, timely. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So then, then I don't think we need immediate. So I guess to end that conversation at some point, in that conversation, this looks like we, we have to involve the legal. That, that, that was not a coincidence, happened. Andy. This, this kind of policy was driven by us figuring out how to do the Spinnaker data collection correctly. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I thank you for clarifying that, Dan. <laughs> All right. So I guess. Uh, I think I'll take with. Um, I don't think James is here. Okay. All right. Um, I think that's good on this. Any anything else on the geometry policy? That's a great start uh, from my perspective. All right. Landscape. Uh, is this Tracy Rollins? I think. Uh, she. I don't know if she's here. Tracy, are you here? Okay. No. Yeah, she was here uh, the last session when most folks were away. I think you were in Tokyo. Yeah. Um, she's. We've rolled it out. It's kind of now at the behest of the community contributors on what they want to do there. So I guess we'll. Um, thank you. Uh, so I guess there's no nothing to discuss on this. I don't right think now. so. I mean, yeah. I think you know if if anything, um, and this is something I meant to talk to to Dan and Dan Lawrence and Kim about is, you know, how much we want to try and leverage this or any of us, you know, who come, who have a mix of open source and proprietary in our, uh, potentially in our wheelhouse, you know, how much we want to try mm -hmm. and uh, expand the listings for context, right? Right. So, you know, really want to, you know, start highlighting the potential integration partner type things. Um, but I haven't really had a chance to sit down with anybody to talk about that more. That probably, right. I suspect, affects Google more than anybody at the moment. Right. I, I'm sure a lot of these people have the same thoughts. Yeah. Um, <laughs> okay. All right. So I guess in, so we will we'll find them. What is the, the plan around it? So, I mean, it, it's uh, out, and anybody who wants, I mean, it's it's out. It's Tracy's done as much as she's going to do. I think now it's just whoever wants to add stuff to it, start putting in pull requests. Yeah. Okay. There is a, yeah, uh, I'm sure you can dig that up in the email archive uh, you have. Um, it's yeah, the, no problem. Yeah, there also needs some correspondence on this. I don't have a pointer right now, but. Uh, 
Um, yeah, there's really a, a landscape repo that has quite a bit of information on how to interact with it. All right, thanks. All right, moving on to new projects, the screwdriver sheet, I guess I lost track of that one. Um, yeah, so uh, <laughs> we were going to bring this up last time and then you were in Tokyo. Um, so, you know, we, we went through and we challenged uh, their initial proposal just due to kind of lack of conforming with our, our government's uh, desires uh, around right. that. They came back with what I thought, I thought was a pretty reasonable proposal. I, Andy, I think you were the only one who was kind of wondering about it. I don't know if you had a chance to look at it. I haven't had a chance, but I'm happy to. Okay, I think one of the cool the cool things to me that they brought um, beyond their sort of community engagement plans was uh, highlighting its use as a uh, sort of an integration mode, particularly towards Spinnaker. Um, so anything that you know simplifies uh, engagement, I think, is a is a good thing. So. That was the thing that kind of put me over the top on thinking this would be a, a potentially good incubator project. Cool. Uh, wh where is that doc? Uh, I have an email out, or I think Kosuke does as well. Um, yeah, I think there's a link. So now I remember um, what, what we said that the next step is you know the both district so the, the great uh, from me and Tara. I think I hope I asked them to put this up on the. You know, pre request in which we were discussing a uh, the incubation of the project. Um, so I hope I pushed back to the action item in their core, but maybe so. I think that's where we track. So I think the next step is that we, we want that updated motivation doc to come to you know the public place. Right now, it's the email draft circulation. Okay, so we ha have them update that, or we update? Yeah, that? I think so. Yeah, I mean it's there. It's in their report also. Um, okay. And, uh, I just should, I forgot the name of the gentleman, but um, also happy to Andy to forward it to you in advance of them getting that. Yeah, going. yeah, yeah. Let's do that. Um, Thanks. And just remember that sponsors um, are optional. Um, it, it's good to have a sponsor uh, as a good practice, but they are optional depending on the size of the project. Um, so, okay. so maybe. Maybe I'm using the term incorrectly. I meant the uh, I meant the folks from the item media who uh, oh, sure. that we came here to present. So, what's the right term? Mm -hmm. I um, guess the sponsor. Yeah. Yeah, I guess from the sponsor from the inside of the project. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The last thing we saw was uh, Jathin was going to publish it, and then we would send out a word of support. So I don't yeah. I don't think I've seen anything from him, but I'm forwarding yeah. this to Andy now. Yeah, so let's ping him again. Um, Are you uh, doing that? Yeah. All right, Andy, you've got mail. <laughs> ah, that brings back memories. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love that movie. Um, What's funny yeah, is that uh, those AOL references were old even when the movie came out. No, it's really old. Uh, are there any other new projects that we are tracking at the moment? I'm not aware of uh, any. Actually, um, uh, yeah, I think Eiffel came in a while back. Um, Sonatype, uh, we've been having discussions with Sonatype. Um, uh, they, they've, they've voiced uh, interest. Um, Right. Yeah, a few others. To the extent that we can talk about those in public, like what's the current status? Are there ways for any of us to help move the ball forward? Uh, they're they're asking um, how best to um, sonotype specifically. We can take offline, but um, Eiffel was just seeing uh, how best to get engaged. I responded back. Um, we we need them to send a pull request. Uh, yeah. to propose their project. Right. Okay. Hopefully having a screwdriver is going to help them feel better that this process is really more prudent. Um, this isn't a project per se, but uh, I, last week I was at Redeploy, um, which uh, is was is run by a guy who now actually works at Netflix. I don't know, Andy, if you know him, uh, J. Paul Reed. Um, he's down there with you guys now. Um, and I was going to reach out to him and I have some thoughts about a potential SIG that that he and the the, the uh, resiliency engineering folks, um, we might be able to kind of get them to to think of something that's a pretty interesting community 
uh, and one of the benefits of the community is it you know has to do with how to adopt some of this stuff so if you think about uh, good models around uh, migration and modernization it's culture plus technology so I'm thinking they could potentially bring some culture discussions to this uh, that might be useful so um, so I'll be talking to him this this week if I can get on his schedule. Cool. And is there somebody Andy knows? I guess we let him agree to me. Well, they're both yeah. at Netflix now. I don't know how well Andy knows him. Yeah, no, I know he is. Yeah. Cool. That's awesome. Yeah, and just for the spirit of full disclosure, Andy, I was the uh, <clears throat> I hired him as an 18-year-old intern back in the Netscape days. So I've That's known awesome. him since. Yeah, I've known him since he was a punk kid with hair. <laughs> oh, that's a great that uh, yeah with hair good one <laughs> all right so you, you you know some of this uh, i guess the weakness to use I, guess I i know a lot of the folks that are kind of in the resiliency chaos engineering uh realm um and you know I, i've been thinking really hard like how can we engage that community because I think it's there's a lot of overlapping um, there's potential for a lot of good overlapping kind of synergy and I realize I just use the word synergy deliberately and I'm sorry for that you <laughs> have to think of a better one that's kind of less buzzwordy hey Tara we, we can take this offline but the uh, the resiliency team at Netflix is in my org. So I'm happy to also hook you up with the, uh, the lady that runs that org. Oh, awesome. Yeah, I th there's good stuff going on there. Um, also, there's uh, uh, some good work going on at Twitter. Um, though the person who's kind of heading that up is, I th think, was like seconds from going into labor. So uh, when she gave her talk, so I'm not sure when they might be ready to engage. But I, there was some, uh, I think there's some real potential We lost Tara, or is it my only problem? I can hear you, so it sounds like we lost Tara. Okay. Yep. Yeah, we lost um, her. Is there a link for uh, Eiffel? What is Eiffel? I'm sorry? I'm asking, what is Eiffel? Is there any link for it? It's, uh, let me find it. I'll let somebody find it and update the. Uh, yeah, we can do it after. Yeah. yeah, I can add the link. All right, so SIGs and working group updates. Security, I don't think anybody involved in here. I don't see K. Anyone yeah, else can give a No, that she wasn't going to be able to make it today. Yeah. yeah, she sent an update to the list right before this. Okay. Melops. Let's see who's uh, who's uh, who, who drives this. Anybody can update us on the Melops. Uh, I know like that the repo has been stood up. Um, the uh, activity is being planned, and I think they're uh, trying to set up a calendar invite, um, finding the right times. Um, I'm not sure uh, the final uh, part of that, but I know the uh, mailing list is stood up. Uh, it's public uh, on groups.io, um, and uh, anyone can uh, ping that list is to participate. Um, there was an initial series of pull requests that got the, um, the SIG started. Um, so I think we're in pretty good shape. I, I don't know the details in terms of uh, the kickoff meeting, but um, I think that's in planning right now. That's all I know. All right. I, I was at a, a event. It was actually a state of DevOps report um, event with Nicole Forsgren. Um, but there was a ton of like little uh, ML startups that had showed up. And so I was pitching that 
Um, there's one in particular in East Bay, so um, I'll make sure that they know about the, uh, the that the group is active in case they missed it. Great. Right. Okay, so the road working group, I, um, I need to, I, I dropped the ball on this one, um, to move this forward. Yeah, I think there's a pending PR. I forgot there are some outstanding, I think there are some outstanding comments that I was supposed to address. By the editing the doc description, I think uh, the last, I took a few meetings back. Um, I think I still owe you some comments on that one too, Kosuke, sorry, that's my bad. And it's doubly my bad because Dan Dan Lopez reminded me of that last meeting. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks for you. Thanks for the help. <laughs> okay, so let's. I need to stop moving along. <laughs> stop dragging my ass. Um, okay, so any moving any other things before we move on to the more practical system and events. The, the one question I had um, that uh, this may be totally perfect uh, the, the dig, you know is is going to be this hopefully this uh, standard uh, around you know the military and that kind of stuff um, are for the various technologies are we uh, are we thinking about how we're going to kind of be uh, fast adopting that when it comes out? Is there any movements that we should be thinking about to make sure that we're taking advantage of that stuff early on? All right, uh, the, your critical parts of audio broken up for me, so I couldn't quite capture what you're oh, saying. Sorry about that. Um, I was saying with regards to the security SIG, I mean, the outcome is gonna be this new standard, ideally, um, mm. as far as how, how tools will report on uh, bill of materials or you know metadata right. around that type of stuff. I'm wondering right. are, are we the, for the individual projects should we be thinking strongly about ensuring that it, you, assuming that goes through that we are like first to adopt um, on that stuff is that something that we should be talking about yet or is it way too premature? Um, so I mean, putting the Jenkins project hat on, like, I mean, I, I'm watching that with the interest, so I think there's certainly a strong interest. Um, I, it's still kind of, it's, it's still up to somebody showing up interested in driving that, like, actual coding work for. I don't think it's just magically happened, or I don't think we can, like, force some volunteers to work on those. Um, okay. And then putting the CDF POC hat on, I mean, if we can, yeah, the, you know, the standard that one part of the CDF worked on, the other parts of that up, then I think that's going to show, highlight, you know, showcase the, the value that the foundation brings. So that's something I'm certainly keen to see. Um, Is there any existing effort around that? So uh, you have what's uh, my understanding of what's happening is there's currently you know people interested in defining this bond quote unquote standard is in security like, you know, they're, they're talking about you know they're working on some technical specification essentially so that's the effort that's happening right now. Okay, uh, I'm asking because we have uh, something similar like a bomb uh, a JFrog we call build in for for. Uh, for quite a few years now, and uh, it's been successfully battled tested. So. Yeah, yeah. And I, I thought the, somebody from JFrog was involved in that too. Yeah, Ido oh, like, Green um, from JFrog was oh. in a okay. couple weeks ago. Okay, then I'll speak to Ido. Okay. Great. All right. Um, So it sounds like the short answer is yes, it's premature, but we've got the right people who are involved in the conversations. So good. Yeah, um, I love to. Yeah, I love to. Yeah, I think let's let's publicize the progress and then let's drive up the interest. I think I think if you sell the value of those de facto standards, I think hopefully this will happen. Um, so, uh, let's see. 
noch schon ein bisschen sie wir schauen jetzt. Ähm, It's okay. Uh, well, on this note, too, uh, my recommendation is not an outcome yet as a standard, but that it is a, a specification or a series of specifications that then it works through a process to become a standard. And that, that process should be something, um, by the time it gets to that point, it should have uh, as wide adoption as possible. Um, but that's my recommendation. Say that again, I wasn't sure if I... We should work to a series, like one or, or a series of specifications before we get to a standard um, and that we aggregate or, or we work towards standards. Um, but by the time we get there, it, it will be um, the widest set of population exposed to the specifications so that the standard is easier to adopt. Got it. So I guess you're objecting to the term standard and what that implies. So I guess you're saying specification feels like a lesser. Yeah. So those yeah. specifications Got mature it. to a standard. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. I'm sorry. I was using those like words very interchangeably, but uh, you're right. Um, That's a much more succinct way of describing what I was fumbling around. Thank you. Yeah, cool. Yeah, the audio when I was looking at so the Bob, especially the stuff that came out of Bob Martin when I was reading it, it was sort of like a little too alien. I mean, the concept was made sense, but the terms and so on, the presentation was like a little too alien. So I felt like that some of the I expected um, Simca people within the Jenkins project to have trouble understanding the you know the, the value of it. So I thought if they did that, if they did more work on setting the value of that, then I, I think that's going to drive up presentation. I mean, that's going to drive up the contribution and that should be. All right. Um, and then I, I, I passed that to Bob. So. Do we have others on the Jenkins Cloud B side that are engaged in that SIG? Uh, I, I poked that, uh, I passed this on to product management and some other, try to engage some other people, but I, I don't think the, I think they, um, Again, the the presentation of that content was a bit too a bit too dense, and I, I felt like I kind of failed to get the traction. I, I think it's fundamentally it's very well done. And okay. So, yeah. All right. Anything more? On this? Is it not developer ecosystem? Who is? Here, I assume, or is this somebody from the outreach? Yeah, Jackie's on. Uh, so I'm she here. Do you guys want to hear about the CD Summit? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> really? um, cool. So, as of October 11th, this is kind of old data, um, but Emily's. Uh, from the Linux Foundation's traveling right now, so she hasn't given me um, new updates. But we did; we were at 82 attendees registered, so we are on track, and hopefully, um, uh, we're going to sell out. Um, so sponsors: Cloud Beach and JFrog, and then we're also working on GitLab um, for a session recording. Um, and then we finally got the launch sponsored by Netflix. And then I also sent a note out to um, Emily and the events team to follow up with that, Andy. So um, apologies if we've gotten, uh, we haven't had that closed yet. Um, and then also um, the one thing that we are coming close to, uh, you know, it might not happening is um, by October 25th, if I don't have all six sponsors lined up for the uh, Mindshare cocktail hour, then we're not going to be able to do it. Um, so if you guys were opening this um, up to, you don't have to be a member to sponsor. So if you guys uh, need me to send out the prospectus, um, please uh, let me know and I can send that over uh, because we are in a time crunch and and looking for for more sponsors otherwise we'll be able to host it I think we're talking later today and I, I think IBM is going to sponsor it 
Okay, cool. Um, yeah, let's, yeah, we do have a chat later. Here. Um, so, um, so I think oh, that's right. up to three, so we would still need uh, another three. Okay. Yeah, so just, um, if you guys can put the, the word out there for us, that'd be great. Um, and then we're also, Jess and I um, are working on a PR plan um, for CD Summit, and I know that, um, we might tap you on the shoulder for writing up a blog. Yeah. Um, especially around the uh, transition of Data Pro account from being Jenkins Six to now being TDF. Um, so we're we're rebranding the the meet the Meetup Pro account. Um, we're still allowing people to if they want to be a Jenkins specific Meetup, that's totally fine. Um, but we we're we're giving them that option, and uh, we're we hope to have that transitioned. Um, by the end of October. So basically what's going to happen is um, we'll, we'll rebrand it with CDF assets and then under, under the pro account there'll be um, Where there's no four different networks for each of the projects and then we'll keep adding that um, as new projects get, get added to CDF. Right. I, I think there's a noise coming out of Paris line. Is that oh, correct? Sorry. No worries. All right. So I think I covered the key bits in the notes. If I didn't miss. Yeah, no, you're um, good. And then um, we are also uh, working on launching uh, a South Bay um, meetup and then one in Israel too. And we're collaborating with JFrog on that. Uh, great. Has there been any discussion of the proposed of those meetup pricing changes? Um, so basically, are you saying like the meetup pro account? So yeah, we um, so CDF has budget to continue sponsoring all of the meetups. Um, what we are no, we have notified um, some of the accounts that have been inactive, meaning they haven't hosted a a meetup for over a year. We notified them that if they are not planning to transition to a new organizer or if they can't maintain the account that we are not going to um, continue sponsoring their fees. So that's one way that we're cleaning up any uh, any meetups that are currently not hosting any events. Um, so we have also pro given a grace period to those meetup organizers who were really active and then there was a drop off. So we're giving them till January 2020 um, to revitalize that, um, you know, start hosting again. So um, that's another, we're still figuring out what the cost is going to be because we're still going through that audit and cleaning it out. Um, yep. Thanks for driving that work. And then the other thing I just wanted to give a quick shout out to Dan Lorek for representing CDF in Japan. Um, so thank you so much for doing that and also the Speakers Bureau. Um, and then we're also, I'm working on putting a webinar program together. Um, so we are doing a call for topics and uh, looking for speakers and volunteers who can help us shape some of that content um, as well as volunteer time. And right now I think we're, the way that we're approaching it is one webinar a month. Um, Cause I just need to see, I, I don't know what that, um, you know, how much work is gonna be to, how much work is gonna go into get uh, preparing this. So that's why we're gonna start it out slow and then hopefully ramp it up. And I think Ravi Lachman from JFrog is, uh, or for Harness, I, I think it's from Harness, um, is going to be wanting to participate as the first one. And then Raj uh, from JFrog mentioned that someone on his team. And you have, you might be able to um, help us track down the right person to um, get the right person for doing a webinar uh, as well from JFrog. But, um, the, the yeah, I already uh, pinged Raj actually. 
And then I think also Tracy Reagan said she wanted to do a webinar about the landscape. So we've already got some people uh, volunteering. I think it's just um, figuring out, you know, a, a, like an editorial calendar for, for the webinar program. Cool. Now, if more people wanted to sign up, where should they go? Um, you know what? Let me create a form and I'll, uh, and I'll give you a link so that if people want to volunteer, then I've got a, a, a place where they can go fill it out and then we can start vetting some of those topics. So yeah, I'll we can send that, that link to the uh, TOC list when it's up. Okay, cool. Yeah, we will do. Cool. All right. And then we've also got a Slack channel. All right, you gotta, gotta join then. Yeah, you guys gotta join. <laughs> <laughs> um, right. And I think that was it. Anything else, Dan? I think on the Slack channel itself, um, we have been, um, every time we build the landscape, it was going to an internal Slack channel, but, um, what would be nice if it if that notification when there's a new build uh, of the landscape it notifies the new CDF Slack channel. So I'm working on that with the uh, CNCF team, and uh, I'll get that up as soon as I can. I'll let you all know when that's up. Hey Jacqueline, what, what's the what's the cost of the sponsorship for the cocktail hour? Um, so each uh, sponsorship is fifteen hundred dollars. Okay. We have yeah. a meeting with the events team later. This is Matt from Puppet, so I'm pretty sure to bring that up. Okay, cool. Yeah, if uh, if you're interested, I can send you the prospectus and then just loop you in with Emily, and then she'll get she's our point of contact for the contract. Yeah, I'm very interested, and I can pass that off this afternoon to the right people. Um, so okay. Great. Yeah, Thank let you. me send that off. Appreciate it. Two more to go. <laughs> All right, any other business? I guess not. Um, one, one last quick question. There were a couple ongoing threads about trying to reserve just meeting space at KubeCon slash the CD Summit. Um, did we get any closure on that? Um, you know what? I sent a note over to the events team um, because we are not uh, getting any uh, meeting room space and I don't think that they ever followed up. So let me send another note to them um, Because Emily uh, would be our our initial point of contact and she'd be able to point us uh, in the right direction We're not like I said, we weren't planning on on doing that. So um, Let me see how she can help. Yeah, Jackie. I just got an update briefly from the CNCF team that um, They're fully booked. So we would have to look for um, the neighboring hotel to do that. Um, but that, that will be Emily to help us do that. Okay. Got it. Okay. So they actually mean the same. Anything else? Going once, twice, and go on then. I guess uh, have a good, have a good day, have a good evening, have a good something, and I'll see you in two weeks. Thank you. Bye bye. Thanks, Kosha. Thank you. Bye. Bye.